Hi, Betham. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, it's always a weird opening. Good to see you because I'm not seeing you. But uh, when you see this, I want you to imagine I'm seeing you, so I'm saying nice to see you. Uh, it's Friday afternoon, and uh, quote unquote, all we have this Shabbat is Shabbat. Last weekend, the phenomenal grand opening of our new sanctuary. I hope you got to be there for at least one of the three main things that we did to celebrate. It was a moment of great pride for this community. And now we get to use the sanctuary and the rest of the building for all the wonderful things that happen here, really seven days a week. Um, the school, Pressman Academy during the week, in addition to all the staff who are here, and the way that our Shabbat is filled up with members of this community. And this week we have a bar mitzvah, Mazel Tov and to Jesse Abrams as he celebrates becoming bar mitzvah in the sanctuary. I also want to say before I get into the piece of Torah, because some of you who were at the uh, Shabbat last week heard me say that two weeks before that, at the soft opening, I had lost my talit, the talit that uh, was my wedding talit that I've been wearing for 20 years. Uh, and in the talit bag had the siddur that my mother bought for me in Jerusalem in 1984, uh, went missing. And for two and a half weeks, we've been looking for it in the entire building. And I was really, I had suffered what halacha would call yeush, I had given up on it. Uh, and and uh, it's ultimately just a thing, but it was very sad for me to give up. And I want to report, and I'd ask the community to look for it. I want to report that it was found today in some pile, and I'm so happy to get it back. Um, so thank you for all who had expressed some support for me about that and uh, who had tried to find it. Okay, kings. Um, Judaism has had an interesting relationship with kings. It would be um, an anachronism, and it would be an inaccuracy to say that the Jewish tradition is one that pushed for dem democracy when it comes to rule for uh, centuries, because democracy didn't exist as an idea. So the Torah is not quite a democratic document at any level, but it also has had a suspicious relationship with royalty, not one that uh, was pushing for it from the very beginning. The introduction of royalty, human royalty, not Melach Machei Hamlachim, the human king, uh, the, sorry, the, the holy, divine king, but the notion of a human king comes in in this week's parsha, Parshat Shoftim. Som tasim alecha melech. You need to place upon you a king. Some commentaries understand that to be a concession, not an ideal. Meaning God would say, I don't think you need a king. I'm your king. I don't think you need to be ruled that way. But if you think that's the way society should be, then yes, you can place for yourself a king. Right? Which is obviously not always the way kings are in place. Usually they're in place because they have conquered. Torah says, place upon yourself a king. And even though hundreds of years of the Jewish monarchy and civilization in ancient Israel were ruled by a series of kings, uh, they weren't all or even mostly good ones and positive ones, even by the Bible's own telling. And in fact, the one most well-known, Solomon, I, maybe you can argue that King David is the most well-known, but Solomon had built a temple and who was venerated as having you know, created glory in ancient Israel, violated in his own life, in his own kingship, almost every rule that this week's Parsha sets out for a putative king. Uh, my teacher, uh, Micha Goodman of the Harvard Institute, has pointed that out in a beautiful way. You can look at every single verse in Parsha Shoftim that deals with what a king should and should not do, and that ends up being a recipe for what King Solomon did, and many of the kings as well. How are we supposed to think about a king from a Jewish perspective. A Hasidic lens, which I so appreciate because the Hasidim, the early Hasidim, they of course knew what the Torah meant, or at least the simplest pshat of what the Torah meant, but they took Midrash, interpretive example, to a new level and basically said, we can exist simultaneously with knowing that the verse might mean this, but what it means to me is something very different. We can take it apart and reattach it in a more spiritual, relational realm, because what did a 18th century chassid in the Pale of Settlement or Poland really have to think about in terms of a Jewish relationship to a Jewish king. Right? Rabbi Yeshayahu of Rupshitz, who was in the second generation of the Rupshitz Hasidic dynasty, his father was Rabbi Naftali Tzvi of Rupshitz, says, I want to read this verse a little bit differently. Som tasim alecha melech, place upon yourself a king, don't think crown and scepter and royalty and palace and authority and running a nation. What he says is this. 
you Jew, you need to have a one, a person, or perhaps more than one in your life who will be king to you in that when your spiritual needs um, are such that you need to turn to someone, when your psychological and moral compass might need some attuning, when you need someone who can speak to you with a sense of spiritual authority and you'll listen, will speak truth to you, you need a melech in your life. Without a melech in your life, everything goes to pieces. It's not quite this, but think of the notion of what a sponsor means to someone in recovery. Someone who in that dyad has almost king-like power. I sponsor and telling you, person in recovery, this is what I see in your behavior. And this is the standard I'm holding you to. So Rabbi Yeshayu of Eruption says, this is not just speaking about a political structure, but a spiritual structure. You need a king in your life, or a queen. You need someone who when you turn to that person, you will listen as if the authority is nearly divine. Not without questioning, but with a sense of hearing the truth that you need to hear. This is a wonderful teaching for me to hear this week. Suffice it to say that it was a week during which had I not had the people, and I am blessed with more than one, to turn to who could speak truth to me through a very complex and challenging set of situations, I'm not sure what I would have done. I'm grateful for the malachim of my life, for the people who have served the role of kind of a personal spiritual royalty, whom I turn to, whom I listen to, and whose word has a deep impact on me. And so I hear Rabbi Yeshayahu of Rapshit saying to all of us, and I'll end here, and then those who want to stay for a meditation, please do. If you don't have such a person, you're lacking, and you should find it. And if you do have such a person, you should turn to that person more frequently, keep that relationship strong, and let's sh make sure that that person knows that he or she is that king or that queen, that melech or malka in your life. Because all of our spiritual beings and centers shudder sometimes and stumble and need the word that could only come from a very small set of people in your lives. Som tasim alecha melech. Find yourself that kind of a king and your spiritual life will be richer. I almost guarantee it. And with that, I'll say to those of you who just want the drash, Shabbat Shalom. <coughs> and if you're still with me, I invite you into a shorter meditation than usual because I believe that far Torah I gave was longer than usual. And I invite you to close your eyes. I invite you to embrace the sensations of your body that come over you as soon as you get into this pose with your feet on the ground and your hands on your legs or your hands open up to the heavens. You can be aware of your breathing without changing it and just note the rhythm of the rise and fall of your chest and the intake of oxygen and the exhaling of carbon dioxide in the magical way that our body allows us to stay alive. And I want you to meditate on the following image. Who speaks with authority in your life? Who is it that if he or she were not let in to your intimacies and to your challenges, you would be lost and bereft without? Whose counsel 
is not always easy to hear, but almost always important to hear. Who is your spiritual melech? As the rabbi of Rupshitz suggested. What are you holding back from that person? What do you need to process that you haven't? What are you afraid to share that you probably should? What is your neshama gnawing on that needs the attention of an authoritative voice so that you can become recentered and be you in the fullest sense? Let this be a Shabbat where you anoint or re-anoint a melech in your life. that will keep your spirit in the healthiest of places. And when you're ready, you can take one last deep breath. And open your eyes. Shabbat Shalom.